Algonquin people have been navigating this beautiful waterway for hundreds of years. And now, it's my turn. <coughs> Whoa! Whoa! <coughs> hey, Don! The Algonquin people never kayaked. So I have to learn kayak? That's right. Thank God, I almost drowned. <sighs> I'm Don Kelly. And I'm what you call an urban native, a city-raised, office-bound Ojibwe. But I can't help hearing a call, a call from my elders telling me it's time to rediscover the old ways and get back to the land. Hello? Hello? Hi, welcome to Fish Out of Water. I am in the territory of the Algonquin of Wolf Lake and I'm gonna be canoeing and all this other Algonquin stuff that I don't even know about yet because they haven't shown me, I haven't done it. That's why I'm here. What I do know is the chief himself is here to meet me and that I like. Hi guys. Hi, Don. Chief Harry St. Dennis of Wolf Lake First Nation, welcome. Chief, nice to meet you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for meeting me here. Andrew. Andrew. Hi, my name is Roy. I'm from the Eagle Village First Nation. Roy, nice to meet you. I'm Don. In our own language, we call ourselves the Anishinaabeg. Literally translated means real people or the real, the real men. Whereabouts are we right now? We're at an island called Long Sioux Island, which straddles the Ontario-Quebec border. This island is the gateway to this part of uh, Algonquin territory. The Algonquin people occupied both sides of the Ottawa River and all the rivers that flow into the Ottawa. So rivers, were they very important then to the shaping the Algonquin way of life? For sure. They were, they were our highways. What should I be learning to just get a sense of what it was like to be uh, an Algonquin man? You have to learn how to survive. And to survive, you need a canoe. Canoe? Fish was very, very important. Fish? And to keep warm. Keep warm, okay. Very important to, to make a, you know, a, sh a proper shelter. And It'll take a whole lifetime to learn about the history of, of the people. You, know? you only have four days. So. I've got four days. So I think um, I'd like to start learning. Good. Okay. Good. Roy, I want to learn how to portage a canoe, but is this really the best place to do it? Yes. I don't know. I've been told to pay attention to signs in nature, but you're the expert, so you got a canoe. You're on the water. Why would you get out? Because uh, the rapids here are too rough, so we have to portage to the next uh, to the next lake here. This is how you grab your canoe? Just like this here. You can do this as a one-man thing? Yeah. I don't know if I'm the best guy for this. Oh, I think you are. Just like this. Wow. One hand in the back. Flip it right up. Uh, hey. Whoa. Hey, put your hand on the paddles and underneath. OK, I think I actually feel somewhat balanced here. You know, these are the hats they're wearing on all the runways in Paris this year. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Watch for pointy rocks. Watch you don't slip. Make sure your paddles are snug good. OK, paddles but are keep, snug. Always keep your focus where you're stepping. That's really important, because you don't want to fall, eh? You can put it down right here. Nice and easy. Easy. Ah, easy does it. I know, it's birch bark, it's delicate. Right on, you did a good job. I'm gonna show you how to take it down the hill because this hill is very steep here, right? If you insist on taking it. Uh, this potash here is one of the original Algonquin potashes. This one right here that this we're one, on? Yeah, it's like hundreds and hundreds of years old. It's a heck of a portage. Yeah, it's quite a challenge, eh? Since you uh, saw me bring it down the hill, I'm gonna let you bring it back up, so it's much easier to bring it up a hill than it is bringing it down the hill. I'm bringing it up the hill. Yeah, you're bringing it up the hill. Just take your time, flip it, <sighs> easy. That's one small step for me and one giant step for potentially dropping into the rapid. Good stuff. It's a challenge to carry a canoe, eh? Oh, yes. Our ancestors carried bigger canoes than this. It took maybe two men. Doing good. Put it to the side, easy. Oh, oh, don't let it slam. That was tough. How did I do? You did, uh, well, for the last part, you bind the canoe. If you would have had to repair this, you, you wouldn't go nowhere tonight. You would right. stay here and feed the mosquitoes. But you did very well. 
So overall, the, uh, the routine was good. I did not stick the landing. And when you don't stick your landing, you probably need to repair your boat. I'm no canoe engineer, but the structural integrity of this craft looks like it's a little compromised. Chris what and Marcel this? have been building canoes for years, and I'm hoping they'll let me in on some of their birch bark secrets. From the pine tree? Yeah, we'll just sap off the tree, and all we just do is just mix it up a little bit of our secret ingredients. You craftsmen, <laughs> it's always your trade secrets. Yeah. You just peel it off with a knife, you get yourself a real good can, get it hot enough so it boils. See the other pan there? That's another recipe. Different kind? Yeah. Try here. Over there? Yeah. Oh, that's another bad one. Yeah. So right along here? Yeah. And then you've got lots there. Just pull it up. Pull it up? Crack. Pull it up in the crack. Wet your thumb. Wet my work thumb. it in the crack. In Keep your thumb really wet. It's not going to Other finger. Me. No, 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 no. There we go. Wet. Keep it wet. Yeah, now just softly to make it nice and smooth. All along here? Yep. So have you ever eaten bear before? Eaten bear? Yeah. Never eaten bear, I don't did think. Did you lick your finger a while ago? Yeah. You did. There's some bear in here? <laughs> what part of the bear? <laughs> Probably best, I don't know anyways. <laughs> lick the finger, mm -hmm. have some bear. Mm -hmm. mm, I can taste the bear. Needs more bear. You have to kiss the canoe up. Yeah. I have to kiss the canoe? That's how yeah. you check for holes. <laughs> yeah. See here? Right. You think there's an imperfection in here? See you Go a little down bit on it. And kiss, suck. It. kiss it. If there's air that comes into your tongue, touches your tongue, it's leaking there. You need to plug it. So pick a spot and give it a kiss. Start kissing. You want this off camera or on camera? <laughs> <laughs> I just met this canoe. I don't know where this canoe has been. Nope. nope. Airtight. Now, I'm getting some air. There you go. I'm getting some air. I'm all hopped up from this kissing here. You guys really get to know your canoes, huh? <laughs> Birch, you always think of as just being the most fragile stuff. It's almost like paper. How do they make, make such good canoes? It is fragile. The right. birch bark itself, real easy to rip. The ribs, you can put them on your knee and smash it. But when you put it all together, then it becomes strong. That's an analogy for the, for the nation. Yep. Right. Well, I want to thank you guys a lot. I think I've got everything I need to know about a canoe. I've even got my first uh, canoe-related blister. <laughs> I hope it's a blister. I hope it's not something I got from kissing the canoe. We'll see what happens. I think he spent a lot more time than we do <laughs> kissing the canoe. Coming up. Roy takes me to a place I don't want to go. Whoa. Okay, paddle hard, paddle hard. Hi, and welcome back to Fish Out of Water. I am learning what it takes to make it as an Algonquin, and so far I have excelled, except for maybe one thing, but I'm pretty sure from here on in, it's going to be nothing but easy. And it's so beautiful, this river. You're Algonquin, how do you feel when you get out on the water? I feel good. I'm home. I'm home when I'm on the river. Some people ride a horse, this is what I like doing. What do I need to keep in mind when I'm out on a canoe going down the river? You're responsible for the bow, eh? Because the guy in the back does can't see in the front. Right. So you have to keep your eyes on the water all the time. You look at the way the water is running, the way the, how, how rough the water is, eh? You never go against the against the, the choppy water. You ride with it. Right. You ride with the waves. It's like cutting with the grain. Yeah. What's the main things to keep in mind when you're hitting rapids? And if the water is spinning back this way, you have to keep away from that. Because if you get hung up in that, and if you had a load, you'd lose everything. Well done. Uh, now that we paddled the river, sure did. Now we're gonna I'm gonna take you down to down to the rapids here. No, that's, uh, that's cool, man. That, that was fun. That was perfect. I got a feel for the river. Okay, we're going to go down to the, down to the rapids. No, that's, uh, that's cool, man. It's, uh, I've got a taste for it. That's okay, okay right. we're going to test it out right there now. If you insist, man. All right. Okay. But if we're, do if we're doing it, I'm getting on the headgear. Okay, all right. Whatever you do, don't stick your paddle underneath the canoe. Okay. Okay? Rapid. Straight ahead? Straight ahead. 
We got a big dip there. Yeah. Spread. We're going right into white water. All right. That's good. Good. Whoa. Okay, paddle hard, paddle hard. Watch it for rocks. You got a big one coming right up yeah, on us. Yeah, that's good. Got to go right between these two. That's good, that's good. Stay away from that rock there. Okay. Paddle hard, paddle hard. Watch the rock. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Good, you're doing good. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, what a ride. Really? We only hit two rocks coming down from two the rapids. Yeah, two rocks. That's not bad, we're still here. It's hard work, man. Hard work, very hard work. If you'll excuse me one second, there's just one thing I need to do. <laughs> Mother Earth, it's good to be back. Right on. I think that rock has a hole in it. Okay, Don, we're gonna set up a teepee here. Set up a teepee, okay, yeah. that sounds good. Wow, I love this pattern. What do you call that? Uh, birch. Full birch bark, I love yeah. it, very stylish. You tie it. You double it up. We're gonna fold it right back up. Okay, and we seem back to square one. Just make a bow tie, right, okay. that's good. The bunny ears? Yeah, the bunny ears. Okay, hey, Don, you're gonna take these two? Yeah, just like that. It's a long time ago, they didn't have rope like this. What they use the moose hide. Moose hide. And uh, same as with the teepees. We Here? never, they never had canvas. Right. Here? They sewed moose hide up. This is our mother, right? That's our hands and this is her ribs. She's giving you her, her, her life, you know, to, uh, to sleep on and to, to respect that, eh? Mom taking care of you, I like that. Well, some of the teepees were made for sleeping, eh? And some are meant for cooking. What about the love shack? Would the love teepee have like, like like a lot of shag in it? Yeah. Maybe a little music, low lighting? Some drumming. <laughs> Some drumming there. Drumming. <laughs> Get the rhythm. Let's pull it right around. We're gonna put these pegs in here. Stitch it up? Yeah. Put it through there. Put it through there, then through. Through here. You have to pull really hard. <clears throat> like that? Yeah. That is hard. There you go, a couple more to go. Okay, we're entering the realm of impossibility here. I gotta start on the outside, right? It must be pretty tall, what, six feet five or? Oh, well on the internet, I'm six four in Swedish. Six four? Come on. This is getting out of my range here. You're, see how you put your stick here, I put your stick in this much. Okay. 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 This yeah. is gonna be impossible. Come on, Don. My fingers are, uh, I don't know, I, I don't sew, I don't knit, but if I did, I'm sure it'd be like I had just knit uh, enough sweaters for the Russian army. The higher you go up on the canvas, the tighter it gets, the tougher it is to thread the stick through the holes. It's killing me, and there's no breeze in there. It is hot in there. Okay. Second to give me some slack. Yeah, it's gonna give me some slack. Now we can go back Woo. up. We can go back up there. Oh, now we can go back up there, <laughs> I see. It's a we, isn't it? It's a we it? thing okay. here today, yeah. <laughs> You cannot believe how hard that last one, and you can't see it either. It's all backwards in here. Ah. Come on, Don. Come on. You're baby. doing it. Yeah, you got it. Ta -da. All right. Woo. Good stuff. Just like that. Okay. I'd watch your hand, Roy. Okay. <laughs> it hards again. Awesome. So, what do you think, Roy? It looks pretty good to me. It looks very good. It was easy because we just took our time. <laughs> it was easy because yeah. you had me inside doing the, doing the threading of the needle and the hammering. Ah, <laughs> the traditional Algonquin Adirondack chair. I could get used to this. Man, these bugs are horrible. These bugs are horrible. Nice and easy. Coming up, the portage of my life. Be careful. This is two years of jazz and tap. Ah, jeez. Hey, how are you? This is Fish Out of Water, and I am smack dab in the middle of my Algonquin adventure. So, if you like to see grown men tested to their breaking point and even beyond, then stick around, because I should be breaking in about three and a half minutes. Hey, Don, what are you doing? Hey, Roy, these bugs are killing me, man. They're eating me alive. The Algonquin people never use bug spray. This, this is what we use right here. It's called fungus from a tree, eh? 
fungus from what tree? Yeah, from a birch tree. That's the birch. That'll burn a long, long time. Wow. I'm gonna show you how to uh, make, a, make a smudge here. So this is gonna keep all the bugs away? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do we start with? The birch bark. Just pull the birch bark and let that catch really good. So we want something that's gonna burn. Is that yeah. why we're going with the birch yeah. bark? Yeah, then we got some a little bit of wood here. Okay. Hey. Okay. Whoa, look at that puppy go. It catch really good. Let it burn. Woo, it's good and smoky. Well, that's gonna keep the bugs yeah. and everything else away. That's smoke. What's burning right here is the, is the moss and the fungus. That's gonna burn a long, long time. That's kind of a sharp uh, smell to it. It's got that yeah. smoky smell one would expect, but yeah. it's kind of sharp as well. Trying to get some air in there. There we wow, go. Wow, I'm getting very sleepy, yeah. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> go smudge your home and uh, smudge okay. around it. And keep swinging it? Yeah, keep swinging it. That's what they used to do. They would have that right in their teepee for about 20 minutes to half hour until all the mosquitoes were out, eh? That's hard on the lungs. Getting right up and close. Good stuff. Not a single bug around us. No. Now, Don, I'm going to give you my smudge. I want oh. you to go walk through the forest and tell me how you do with the mosquitoes. This is the real test, isn't this is it? The real test. If I'm damaging any plants, it's on your head, Roy. Or if I start a massive forest fire in Algonquin country, that's your fault as well. Doing good. Any mosquitoes around? Nothing. So what do you think of my smudge? I think it's working. I'm surprised. I give it my anti-bug seal of approval. And it's fun. Great. It's fun for the whole family. Right on. Hey, Don, you've been in Algonquin territory for a while now. That's your final challenge. I can't just walk through the woods and enjoy the scenery then head on. Has to be a final challenge. Got to be a final challenge. OK, what do I have to do? OK, I want you to potash and fish in, in your canoe skills. All right, you want me to do it, I'll do it. Great. Hey, Don, this is the portage. I take it it's that way. It's that way. 100 meters, 150, you'd say? Kilometer long. Kilometer long? A young guy like you should take you 15 minutes. OK, let's do it. Man. That feels a lot heavier than it did the other day when we were portaging. Don't focus on how heavy this canoe is. Focus on the trail and look ahead because your life depends on this. Nice and easy. That's good. OK, go. I'm moving. When you're carrying the canoe, you breathe in and out. Breathing deeply. There's a little bridge there. OK. Be careful when you're going across. I'm feeling good so far. Canoe getting heavier? It's not too bad. OK, this looks a little tricky here. Getting tired? <laughs> Roy, you're supposed to be encouraging me. <laughs> Doing good, Don. <laughs> Thanks, Roy. You're just like a bulldozer going through the bush here. <laughs> I must have had all your moose meat and your bear meat this morning for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, be careful. This is two years of jazz and tap. Ah, geez. I can see That's water, solid. Roy. You Algonquins are big on feeling the burn, aren't you? Nice and easy. Right on. OK, when you put your canoe down, down face it over. Because it's a birch bark canoe, you never face it. Put it back down. Like this? Yeah, that's right. Just like that. Well done. You did it in 13 minutes. 13 minutes? Let's get it. That's not bad. Right on, buddy. Check the rapid. Oh, yeah. It's very swift, eh? You know what I see? I see death when I look at that. It's very dangerous. Don did very well. I was really impressed. I give him about a 9 out of 10. Birch break canoe, you, know, you always face it up like this here. His next challenge is the hand style fishing. Where should I be going to? Okay, to just, catch the just go about maybe about 30 yards, 35 yards out. 30 there. yards straight out? Yeah, straight out, yeah. Hasn't put his line in the water yet. He's going down. I'm getting hungry over here. I just jumped there. Get it, boy? Took my worm. I'm relying on you for supper, you know. Great Caesar's ghost, they took my worms again. <laughs> They're outsmarting me, man. <laughs> you really have to kiss the worm this time to catch a fish. Huh, I don't get it. I'm a good jigger, but I'm not catching anything. Anything? 
Another nibble. Can't eat nibbles. Son of a gun, right? <laughs> I've opened like a fast food stand for fish out here. You want to start tonight? <laughs> He's not baiting his hook good enough. He's doing more paddling and fishing. No more bites? I think I filled him up good. What about us? What are we going to eat? Well, my worm's still there. <laughs> Roy, I may have to take a gimme on this one. I'm coming in. Already? Empty handed. That's a hard thing to do. And you know, you just gotta, you never say you give up. I, I give him some, some credit for, for, for trying. There was a turtle out there. He looked good. He was starting to look pretty good. You make turtle it's a soup? It's sac a sacred animal. All right. On the fishing challenge, I gave him, I say, a four out of 10. Never give up. You never give up. Don, are you ready to do some whitewater canoeing? Sure, you and me, we can do it, man. Solo. I don't want to do that. Are you ready? No, I don't want to do that. Let's go. Fun and games, ha ha. Let's send Don down the river, but uh, death and paralysis becomes a real option when you look at that white water. Let's go, Don. Pull on that bottle. Come on, you can do it. Keep your canoe straight. Go hold back. Okay, straight, go straight. Go straight, keep going. Pounds are sure, hard, pull hard. You're doing good. Don did very well, I was really impressed. That was pretty difficult for one person. I was actually just letting the river do a lot of the work and I was just concentrating on trying not to be afraid, trying not to scream. I think he got over his fear by doing his solo. I'm dry, I have no new bruises to speak of. I give him about, a, about an eight, eight out of 10. So overall, what did you think? You did very well on the white water. Well, thank I, you. Thank yes, you. I was really amazed. So, so was I. It's been uh, an amazing experience, uh, Roy. We've just touched the surface. I got to learn more, but I, everything I've learned, I've learned from you, so I appreciate that. Great. Thank you very much. Miigwech, uh -huh, as we miigwech. say. Uh -huh. As a big city kind of guy, I'm not much of a camper. Before meeting Roy, I couldn't understand how people could stay, never mind live, outdoors without our modern day luxuries. Roy showed me how resourceful our native peoples were as they lived off the land. Taking things like the moss from the trees to build a natural bug repellent and birch bark to make canoes are just two examples of how our people survived. I only have to look around me to see that no matter how difficult a situation is in my own life, there's always a way to solve a problem and create new opportunities. Pull hard on your paddle! That's a critical lesson for me to take on my own journey through life. You know, these Algonquin guys are pretty sharp when it comes to canoeing, but they have to open themselves up to other traditional forms of river transportation, like tubing. No paddling, no technique. No paddling, no technique. Just pure, pure relaxation. I wonder if Roy knows anything about tubing. If fish out of water were an Algonquin wire, he would be not bad.